So why do electrical outlets cost more per vehicle than hydrogen? You'd think that would not be the case since the hydrogen station cost maybe one and a half to two million dollars. And well, we assumed uh, 1,500 to 2,500 or maybe 8,000 or 18,000 for electrical outlets. But the uh, issue is refueling time because, by the way, the average refueling time on those 27,000 refuelings that NREL monitor was 4.4 minutes. Whereas, of course, with electrical uh, systems, it takes anywhere from eight to four hours, depending on the voltage. And I'm being very generous with the eight hours because the, uh, the Chevrolet Volt is, it it takes 10 hours to refuel at 120 volts. And I believe the, uh, the Nissan Leaf is 16 hours. And Janet just told us at lunch that it was now it's 18 hours, was it? For the, For the prototype RAV4, it's prototype eight, eight, eight. soon to be much. 28 hours, that's right, thank you. Uh, soon to be much lesser with the, uh, with the production unit. But we assumed eight hours. So in other words, one hydrogen station can serve up to 2,300 fuel cell vehicles, whereas one outlet can only serve one to maybe two battery electric vehicles. Because even with you know, eight hours charging time, if they get down that low, uh, it's pretty hard to schedule more than one or two vehicles per day at that, with that kind of charging time. So if I want to put in uh, a million fuel cell vehicles, it would cost maybe 650 to 870 k. If I want to put in a million battery electric vehicles, it would cost 1.25 to 1.5 million. Now, why does it take so long to recharge batteries? Here's a little analogy I like to use. Every time you fill up your car tank, if you pump 14 gallons of gasoline and it takes you three minutes, that's the equivalent of 10 megawatts of power surging through that hose in your hand. Just think if that were electricity. You'd have to have a general electric aeroderivative, aeroderivative uh, gas turbine to produce that much power. The average fueling time for the hydrogen power in the NREL test was about 1.8 megawatts. But of course, a home 120 volt, 20 amp circuit has a maximum, according to NEC, of two kilowatts of power. That's 5,000 times slower than pumping gasoline and about 950 times slower than pumping hydrogen. With a type two 240 volt 40 amp circuit at eight kilowatts, you're still 1300 times slower than pumping gasoline and 240 times slower than refueling your car with hydrogen. Now I'm gonna give some data from our NHA study here first on greenhouse gas emissions real quickly. This is a chart going out over the whole 21st century. This is the 1990 greenhouse gas emission level and of course, uh, as we all know, we want to get to 80% below 1990 levels, hopefully by 2050. In the EU, McKinsey determined that you'd have to get 95% below 1990 levels to make up for other parts of the European infrastructure that could not reduce by 80%, like aircraft. And uh, industry also has done a, a good job of cutting back energy consumption, so they can't cut 80%. So they say that vehicles have to get down to 95%, which they believe we can do with fuel cell vehicles. Here's what happens with business as usual. Uh, vehicle miles traveled was going up, and then here's the, uh, the great uh, recession of 19, wherever it is, 2009. I've leveled it off, then I assume that vehicle miles traveled begins to increase again. So if we don't do anything, uh, greenhouse gas emissions will go up. If we add uh, hybrids, that goes down. If we add plug-in hybrids, it goes down again. In the model, we assumed that the electrical infrastructure would become green by about, I think, 2070 was when the last coal plant was phased out and or replaced with carbon capture and storage. And finally, with uh, biofuel plug-in hybrids, uh, this is the situation you could get. And here, uh, we used uh, cellulosic ethanol as the model for the biofuels. And then here's the result with uh, gasoline hybrid electric vehicles. You could achieve the 80% reduction by roughly 2065 with the market penetration scenarios that we used. And here would be the result if we could uh, convert all vehicles, that includes pickup trucks, SUVs, all running on batteries, then maybe by the end of the century we could get down to 80% reduction with battery electric vehicles. But again, here's one of the major results from the McKinsey report. They concluded that Battery electric vehicles are great, well suited, as they said, for small vehicles that travel short distances, as we all know. But they concluded that even in Europe, 50% of all cars are either too big or travel too far to be affordably powered by batteries only. And therefore, hydrogen and fuel cell vehicles would have to be part of the mix in Europe. 
in order to achieve their 80% reduction. And I think one of the speakers this morning had a slide that said the United States is committed to an 80% reduction in greenhouse gas emissions. I'm not sure where that commitment came from, but it certainly is not pervasive in Washington, D.C. But in Europe, they're very serious about getting to 80% reductions. So in terms of battery market share, if we go by the EU a McKinsey study, the maximum would be 50%. You've often heard people say, well, if we have multi-car households, one of the cars could be battery electric and the others could be conventional cars. Well, I looked up the numbers and if we did that, if every multi-car household in the country bought one battery electric vehicle, that would amount to about 27% of the cars on the road. I took it a step further. If I assumed that every two-car household bought one battery electric vehicle, every three-plus car household bought two battery electric vehicles, that would be equivalent to 36% of all cars on the road. So what I'm saying is our model should really only go from 27 to maybe 50% is the range. So we went back and put that into our model. And now the electric vehicle scenario goes from here to here. In other words, we could never achieve the 80% reduction with battery electrics alone. And incidentally, uh, I haven't completed all the um, McKinsey information into our model. And when I do that, these lines are going to come up here I believe greenhouse gas emissions will be higher with battery electric vehicles than with biofuel plug-ins. I don't have time to explain it now, but if anybody's interested, ask me in the Q&A section. Uh, in California, we all know your grid is greener here, but McCarthy and Yang at UC Davis have shown that even in California, a uh, fuel cell running on hydrogen has lower greenhouse gas emissions, particularly than a plug-in hybrid with 40 miles all electric range or lower than a battery electric vehicle, even in California. In a very busy chart, I apologize. Uh, this is from uh, Amgad Al Ghulmani at Argonne National Lab. This is a plot of greenhouse gas emissions. And for example, here's the gasoline internal combustion engine vehicle in roughly 400 grams per mile. And a battery electric vehicle would have lower emissions, maybe 290 grams per mile. But a Hybrid electric vehicle, non-plug-in like the Prius, would be lower yet at maybe 260 grams per mile. A fuel cell electric vehicle running on hydrogen from natural gas would be around 230 grams per mile. And a plug-in hybrid with 40 miles range like the Chevy Volt would be up here. So notice the Volt would have more greenhouse gas emissions than an electric vehicle. And also notice the slope of this line. This is 40 miles all electric range, 30, 20, and 10. So what I'm saying is, what these data show is that if you have a Volt and you never plug it in, run it 100% of the time on gasoline, you'll have lower greenhouse gas emissions than if you plug it in, which is another way of saying that uh, the grid is so dirty today that particularly with hydrogen, as you can see, this slope goes up. The more and more I plug in my hydrogen vehicle, the, the greater the greenhouse gases will become. Now another comment you may hear is, well, we have to go to plug-in hybrids now because we can put them in immediately whereas fuel cell vehicles are sometime in the future. And our model does acknowledge that. We assume that uh, plug-in hybrid electric vehicles hit 10 million vehicles by about 2024, I think it is, and fuel cell vehicles don't hit that mark until five years later. So plug-ins have a five-year head start, but despite that, if we look at greenhouse gas emissions from 2020 to 2030, the fuel cell electric vehicle scenario by you know, roughly 2022 or so already has lower greenhouse gas emissions than plug-in hybrids or the battery electric vehicles. So even in the short term, hydrogen is a better way to go. Local air pollution, now this is one chart from the California Air Resources Board. And this shows that, for example, the Chevy Volt has 20 times more CO than a Prius non-plug-in hybrid electric vehicle. So CO in NOx and NINMOG were going to go up uh, with the Chevy Volt compared to the Prius. Oil consumption, a very similar chart, same hierarchy. Battery electric vehicles are here. By the way, this line here is the line where we could provide all non-transportation oil needs from American oil only. And we reached that point around 2060. In an emergency, in a crisis, we could do that. Uh, we could reach that point by around 2060 with the fuel cell vehicle scenario. We could never reach it with battery electric vehicles with the assumptions that I've mentioned earlier. Oh, and then the same thing in terms of near-term uh, oil consumption from 2020 to 2030. Again, by 2021, 20, 22, 
the fuel cell electric vehicle scenario will have lower uh, oil consumption than either battery electric vehicles or plug-in electric vehicles. Vehicle costs, so real quickly, since I'm running out of time, uh, these are some data from Cromer and Haywood at MIT where they show that a fuel cell electric vehicle would cost about $3,600 more than a regular vehicle, but they also show that plug-in hybrids uh, would cost more with, with more than 30 miles all electric range, and a battery electric vehicle they estimate would cost uh, $10,200 more, even though uh, in their model the fuel cell electric vehicle has 350 miles range and the battery only has 200 miles range. And then these are data, again, from the McKinsey, stata, McKinsey study. In 2050, they estimated that a fuel cell electric vehicle would have lower costs to own and operate than a battery electric vehicle, a plug-in, or even a gasoline or diesel vehicle. And that's including the price, the operation maintenance costs, the fuel costs, and they've even tacked on the infrastructure cost here, uh, this little purple bar at the top, again showing that infrastructure is a very small part of the cost so our conclusions are we really need a portfolio of options. We can't rely on any one thing. And it's too early to pick winners and losers, and particularly when the best option in our judgment is eliminated, which we believe is what the Obama administration has done by eliminating hydrogen and fuel cell vehicles. And just to illustrate how the car companies view this, I've got three more slides, bear with me. This is the GM view. view. They look at the battery electric vehicle as being a small car for city and interurban traffic. E-Rev is the uh, extended range electric vehicle, which is what they call a plug-in hybrid, the Chevy Volt in this space, and then the fuel cell vehicle everywhere else. Uh, Toyota, similar chart, uh, battery electric vehicles, fuel cell vehicles out here, larger vehicles, longer distances, and plug-ins in the middle. And Daimler uh, only had a one-dimensional chart, just looking at range, and they concluded that only fuel cell te technology is suited equally for both short and long range. Uh, sustainable mobility. And maybe this is the best chart to illustrate the portfolio approach. And this is from Tom Kaket's speech uh, back in Washington in February. And this shows the mix of vehicles that CARB believes would be necessary to achieve the 80% reduction that California is trying to achieve. Gasoline vehicles, adding hybrids, adding plug-ins, adding, adding batteries, but fuel cells as you can see, you have to dominate the mix by 2050 in order to meet their goals. Thank you.